to the 20 yard that's a 16 yard line look at the eyes of Peyton Manning he's looking right at Cedric Samuel the free safety knows he's in center field and he's got the field spread out now steps back five step drop and Joy Kent right in the scene for the touchdown good play call by Tennessee and again good eyes good vision by Peyton Manning they're giving credit for nine yards in the running play so it's second and short but they turn and hand it off to Chester Ford and the fullback is going to have the first down as he cracks his way at right tackle. John Walters, number 90, the middle linebacker, along with Samuel on the stop. Ron, when I watched the team from last year's Alabama game in Tennessee, we did that ball game. Tennessee really had success running the football last year. They, they gained over 200 yards, 207 yards versus Alabama. Tonight, Jake Graham is as important a member of this football team as Peyton Manning because he's got to have his 100 plus yards tonight. Staley, number 12, comes in at wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. But the pitch goes to Graham. Looking for a spot to run. There is not much there as he get hammers at the 20-yard line. In that game last year, well, go ahead. Let's take a look at these starters. We never got them on, Mike, because of the touchdown. Shannon Brown, the All-American preseason candidate, that defensive tackle. He's playing with a hamstring problem tonight. We'll keep a close eye on him. The linebackers, boy, they are awfully good, particularly Staten and Rudd. Rudd is a 4-5. Kevin Jackson, you didn't hear his name last year. He's out of junior college. I think a real fine, Mike. Fakes the draw. Manning throws it complete to his tight end. And Pfeiffer is going to be wrestled back to the 18. They're giving forward progress to the 22. And now it's third down Tennessee. Down in that game last year after the Alabama loss, you and I were standing out in the parking lot. And it was an unusual scene. Uh, Peyton Manning coming out of the game. He was down the dumps. And there was Archie, his father, with his arm around him. And I asked Peyton what he told him that night. And he said, he walked me back to the dorm. He said, hey. There's going to be some ups, and there's going to be some downs in this football. I've, I've had it all, and you're going to have it that way. But that's nice to have a father who's been there to show you yeah. after a ball game. Isn't, isn't that for sure? Manning's pass complete, and he's going to have the Tennessee first down at the 29-yard line. He has made such improvement in a year. You talked to David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, Peyton Manning studies film. His dad showed him how to study it as a sophomore in high school. Here he finds Marcus Nash on the curl route. But he understands defenses. When you have a quarterback like a Peyton Manning, he understands what Bill Oliver, defensive coordinator, is trying to show him. He knows how to attack it. He's not going to make a lot of mistakes. Inside the 40 to the 35 yard line as Deshea Townsend gambled on the play and lost. Brad Ford was in pretty good shape over there, number 11, for the interception. And I think really he was going for the interception and, and didn't, didn't pick it off. And I maybe underestimated the strength of Peyton Manning's arm because you're going to see the throw outside. Good pass protection. And here's the throw on the outside. Here's number 11. Brad Ford going for the interception. Just a good throw by Peyton Manning again on the outside to Ronnie Pillow. So this drive started at the seven-yard line. It is first down at the Alabama 35. Linebackers showing blitz. They stay at home. They'll throw the quick screen. And it's Marcus Nash who will take it for a gain of about five, maybe six, inside the 30-yard line as Kevin Jackson makes the tackle. Well, what happened on that run was as Peyton Manning looked to the outside, Marcus Nash didn't have anybody on him. And it's the uncovered receiver rule. When you find someone split the field, when, you, when you've got receivers all over the field and they do not put somebody on him, then you just raise up and throw him the football. St. 
same situation. The pass, nobody on him. He'll turn it upfield, close to the first down, and this is going to be an interesting spot from where the linesman has come in. Ralph Staten puts the stop on him, but they're very close to another first down. In fact, Gene Stallings has walked right down there. Same situation as you see. No one in this area right here on Joey Kent, the, in, the middle receiver. So Peyton Manny sees that, just throws to the inside receiver. Pardon me, Joey Kent. There's nobody out there. You've got two blockers right away on Ralph Staten. A good play again by Peyton Manning, making that adjustment to the line of scrimmage. Well, they, they've got everything going for Phil Fulmer right now. The passing game, you got Alabama's defense a little bit on their heels, and yet you really haven't unleashed your running game yet. Phil Fulmer wants to see this streak end. In the last nine years for Tennessee, 0-8-1. One of the things that has killed Tennessee has been turnovers. In that length of time, Tennessee has had 30 turnovers. Alabama only eight in that nine-year period. Makes the run, throws the pass, and he drops it. The first incompletion, and Maurice Staley had it in his hands, and he just dropped it. Let's go down to Mike Adam. You know, watching Peyton Manning throw in practice before the game, it's easy to see why his wide receivers love him so much. Joey Kent says... Peyton makes it easy. His passes are always right of the money and right between the numbers. The 80-yard touchdown pass certainly was. I look at what Joey Kent has done this year, and already he has surpassed his totals of 1994 with 352 yards and four touchdowns. Well, the 80-yarder does uh, wonders for your average, Mike. Second down, line to make. Just inside the 16, Manning with the screen, has his man there on the blocker in front. At the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Volunteers, Jay Graham. And there was a flag down back at the line of scrimmage on the near side of the field. Procedure against Tennessee. This has been a series of mistakes and turnovers for Tennessee. In the last 10 years, you were telling me a figure the other night of Tennessee's turnovers and uh, one I just Alabama mentioned. and mistakes. Well, illegal motion against the offense, movement at the snap. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Looks like Joey Kent was not set on the play. Yeah, but the 30 turnovers, Mike is is an astronomical number when you look at in, in one series and the fact that in that nine-year period of time only eight against Alabama that's right and that was a good call and that's another good call by Phil Fulmer and David Cutcroft because they ran the screen against a penetrating blitzing Alabama team so even though it's a race it's still in the memory of that defense never snap Shannon Brown comes across and hits Manny who doesn't have the football and a dead ball foul offside against the defense five yard penalty is still second down Catch NFL game day on Sunday when Boomer and the boys examine Jim Harbaugh, a man on top. What's wrong with Drew Bledsoe? And quarterback protection, a question of self-preservation. NFL game day, Sunday, 11.45 a.m. sharp. Ron, Jim Harbaugh is a cousin of mine. I'm going to tell you, he is a great kid. And I'm so happy for the success he's having. Mike, the five yards outside penalty, so... Tennessee gets it back. Pass is caught. Kent at, no, they say incomplete. Unable to hold on. Dwayne Rudd really put the lumber on him, and now it's third down, Tennessee. Pretty good throw again by Peyton Manning, but Dwayne Rudd just broke on the ball, made a good play. Seven to nothing, Tennessee. They just scored on a play that was called back because of procedure. Right now, it's third down. And to keep it going, they need to go to the 15-yard line. Seth has a man. Got it. Touchdown, Tennessee. Marcus Nash.
Just a good move by Marcus Nash, who was the middle receiver on the three receiver side, ran a corner route and another nice throw by Peyton Manning. Jeff Hall tries to make it 14 to nothing, and he does. And as we head to break, we have 742 left in the opening quarter. Manning already with 154 yards. Will that be a window or aisle? Yes, sir. Window. Aisle seat. Field. And if the four down linemen can't get to the quarterback, which they can't, then you've got to go up linebackers. Bergdorf with play action. Zips it out in the flat. That's a little. Hit by Terry Fair, number 13, and uh, he'll knock him out of bounds. And they're going to give him forward progress to the 27. Mike, this is one of those things. I know how the Alabama fans feel because I'm in as much shock as they are to see somebody come in this stadium and rock them the way Tennessee has on these two opening possessions. Well, I said early in this broadcast, this quarterback, Peyton Manning, has the best ability of any quarterback in college football to go on to the next level. Shovel pass, and you can see Riddle is hit just as soon as he got the football. And let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, folks may have seen the score go by in the update. Here is how Northwestern is in a double-digit hole. A punt block. Sean McNenemy takes it off the foot of Paul Barton. Two plays later, Chris Darkins runs it in from six yards out. Northwestern trails at the Metrodome, 14-3, and they are early second quarter. Ron and Mike. So Minnesota trying to come up with the upset tonight in the Big Ten. Oh, my goodness. Little with the hit. Ball is loose. Tennessee recovers. Was the play dead? No, sir. Volunteer football. Alabama going into this football game had a very poor percentage on third down. They have not been converting all year. Leonard Little with the big play. Number one, who was a former linebacker that now is playing down, makes the hit. And the recovery by Bill Duff, number 50. He's in on the recovery. And I, I keep going back, Ron, to the fact that they're throwing the ball so successfully, and you've got Jay Graham back there, and they had so much success running the ball last year. They haven't even had to use the running game yet. Well, let's see what they come up with here. Alabama can certainly not give away more points on this drop. Manning pass is dropped. Marcus Nash had it hit him on the fingertips, and uh, maybe a little bit behind him, but it certainly looked catchable, and he dropped it. When you looked at Peyton Manning's statistics, you have have to add in the drop balls because he's been on the mark in this first quarter. What I think what, all, all three incompletions yep. have been dropped, I think. What makes him good is the Tennessee fans should enjoy watching him play as he works at the game. He studies the game, and that's why he's so successful. 14 to nothing, Tennessee. And they have some kind of opportunity here with the second and 10 and the ball at the Alabama 25. Short drop, and the pass knocked out at the line of scrimmage. Alabama will give you a lot of different looks. Trying Gene Stallings and Bill Oliver trying to find a way to get to Peyton Manning. If you can't get to him with the front four, then that causes you to the problem of trying to get linebackers added into that, and then that leaves zones uncovered. Chris Hood comes out of the lineup, and it will be a three-man rush for the Crimson Tide. Three linebackers, five defensive backs. They swing it out. Graham, and with the second effort, may have picked up the first down, and he did, Mike Gottfried, at the 13-yard line. Staten finally hit him, but how big is that? Big, and Bubba Miller, you speak big. Bubba Miller's big at 6'1", 295, is leading this little flare pass. Jay Graham just out of the backfield. This is a call play right from the start. Bubba Miller, number 71, out there. Just a couple missed tackles. Well, you can't miss tackles. Brad Ford, number 11, just did not wrap up Jay Graham. Bubba's not playing 100%. He is 40 straight starts for the Volunteers, but he's got a little bit of a leg problem just below his knee, not 100%. First down, here's Graham in the running play. 
cuts it back nicely. With a stiff arm, he'll have five yards as Ralph Staten makes the tackle. And let's check a marker that came in late. Looks like a face mask on Alabama, but Ron, credit to Tennessee offensive line in this first quarter. They've given excellent pass protection to Peyton Manning. They made some moves this week, or last week, where they moved tackles inside to try to work against the stronger defensive tackles in the 4-3 that are head up on them. We have a face mask foul against the defense. We'll penalize half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Replay first down. So it is first and goal, and the ball just inside the five-yard line. We got them spread out so much in this football game. The running game's there. Peyton Manning's making excellent decisions. They just got Alabama's defense on their heels. Rogers Redding, the referee tonight, whistles it in play. Here come the volunteers with the first and goal. Right side, hurdle to the two-yard line. Mike Adamley, let's check in with you. Ron and Mike, it was one of Tennessee's strengths at the beginning of the season, and it still may be, but a lot of changes in the Volunteers' offensive line. Here were the starters across the board for the opener against East Carolina. Since then, tight end David Horn broke a big and right tackle. Leslie Rapp suspended, suspended for disciplinary reasons. The revamp line looks like this, and you can see the change. Bubba Miller now playing right guard, and Smith, Jeff Smith, playing center. He's played that position before and doing well tonight. Second down, Mike. You can see how close it is straight ahead. Not going to get there. Maybe a half yard. Chester Ford being pushed back. And they are going to mark it just outside the one-yard line. Staten was the first man to get there to it. What you want down here if you're Alabama is penetration. You want to be able to get somebody across that line of scrimmage. You see the down linemen as low as they are. You just want somebody to get inside, penetrate, before Jay Graham can go up over the top. Also, Daryl Blackburn, number 44, down at the bottom of that five. Third down, Tennessee. Dangerous down here is a play-action pass also. Manning put it on his hip, boot leg, and he'll walk it in. Touchdown, Tennessee, 20 to nothing. Tennessee faithful who journeyed down here to, to uh, Legion Field are really having fun and we still have 5.04 left to play in this opening quarter. Ball's extra point attempt is perfect. So let's take a break. 5.04 left opening quarter. Tennessee 21 to nothing. Decatur has a blind on the sideline, and you can imagine the smiles on those faces as you look at Smith, Peterson, Lehman, Redo also, uh, along with Robert Cool. Uh, these kids have got a lot to uh, be happy about with a 21 to nothing lead. 504 left in the opening quarter. Here's Hall's kick. This is Fagan from the eight. Check it. Marcel West, and he will be knocked out of bounds just shy of the 40. Mike? When you make that call on the goal line situation, your offensive line has to come off like it's going to be a run. Now watch the offensive line sell out to make Alabama think it's a run. Now you're going to see Jay Graham. Watch him. He goes up in the air like he's got the football. That's what makes the play for Peyton Manning, the effort of the team to show run all the way. Good take by Peyton Manning in the end zone. Good team play. So let's see if Alabama can get something going. Third start. Gets away once and then stumbles and goes down at the 45-yard line. Freddie Kitchens into the ball game, Thank Ron. Back number nine. 
the sophomore out of Atala, 6'2", 230 pounds. And right now, Alabama just wants to get something shaken. You're, you're right. They're trying to get something going. Freddie Kitchen's numbers, he's thrown five passes. He was suspended the first two games of the year. So uh, people like his ability to throw the football, and that's why he's in the ball game. You know, one thing you also have to remember, this afternoon at the Cotton Bowl, Texas led 21 to nothing and finished with a 24-24 tie. So there's never a time when you can let down. This is Riddle. And it looks as though he's going to have the first down or close to it, but they're going to mark him at the 46-yard line. Ron, you're always looking for a jump start as a coach. You get behind 21 to nothing. Gene Stallings is just looking for a spark right now. So you're not surprised no. that he made the change right No, he's at Brian Bergdorf uh, is a fine quarterback, and I'm sure you're going to see him back in the ball game. But what he's looking for right now is Freddie Kitchens to come off this bench and give a spark and bring this ball club back to life. Well, he's got a third down situation now. He needs the 50-yard line. And Alabama's been terrible in third down. Still holding on to it, ran right by the Tennessee player, and then White will wrap him up. Shane Burton coming across also. And the fact it was Burton 64 or 84 rather than 64 on the stop. Gave that statistic early in the game that coming into the night, third down conversions, Alabama was 19 of 70 for just 27%, and they have not been able to keep the chains moving tonight. So Hayden Stockton to punt it away, and it's Sean Summers who is back in a single safety for Tennessee. And out of bounds just inside the 20. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday at 11.30. We get things going. Birmingham, Alabama. 21 to nothing. Tennessee has jumped on top big and early in this one. Quick pass to McCullough. Mike Turico, let's check back with you. Ron, Miami fell behind 7-0 at home to Rutgers. They made a fourth and one from their own 20, and then Ryan Clement. 39 yards to Jamie German, the Canes, and the Scarlet Knights, all tied at seven. It's a rainy night in Miami. Okay, so the Canes draw even at seven. Comes in tied, hoping to take him uh, close in distance. This running play is the defense, a nice job, and Graham, he didn't want to go down. Ball comes loose, picked up by Alabama, and the officials say play is dead at the 25-yard line. Jay Graham trying to bounce this ball outside, takes the handoff, now tries to work outside, slides outside. Missed tackle by Kevin Jackson, number seven, now just scoots up the field, trying to get what he can get. You see the Alabama DeShay Townsend trying to pull the ball out. Good call by the officials. Forward progress had stopped, so it is third down, Tennessee. And they need to take it to the 29 to keep this drive going. to the right side and he is close to the first down as the flag comes in ball is loose and that's the beanbag going down because of the turnover and Dwayne Rudd has made the recovery for the Crimson Tide. Kelvin Moore made the hit and caused the turnover. Well you saw in the play before where the Shea Townsend tried to pull the ball out of Jay Graham's hands when you get behind 21 to nothing you've got to be able to try to cause turnovers. Here's Number 87, Dwayne Rudd, just sliding over, getting in a situation where he makes the play on Ronnie Pillow. The ball comes loose, and Alabama and Rudd recover. So Alabama with a huge break right here, and let's see if they can take advantage of it. Freddie Kitchens will continue to operate at quarterback for the Crimson Tide. Sweet blocker in front, and he's going to be knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Raymond Austin, number 28, up on a strong safety position to knock that play down for no game. 
reminder, every 10, 30, and 50 minutes after the hour, ESPN updates you on all the scores in the world of sports, including the top 25 scores from college football today. We're talking about the turnovers, Ron. You talked about the last nine games, Tennessee 31 turnovers, Alabama just nine. And the difference. And second down. Kitchens pass thrown behind Malone. Todrick making the cut over the middle, and he had found himself open, but the ball was behind him. And now it's third down, Alabama. Had him wide open, Ron. Todrick Malone wide open over the middle. Freddie Kitchens just didn't hit him. You'll see number 80, Todrick Malone working inside against the two deep coverage of Tennessee. Wide open, just can't get him the football. Wow. Another third down. I don't believe that Alabama's made a third down tonight to keep the chains moving. Need to take it to the 18. This is good protection this time. Gets it out in the flat. Malone breaks the tackle, and there is your first conversion of a third down situation. Austin finally puts the stop on him, but it's first and 10 at the 14. And I'm sure John Davis, the defensive coordinator of Tennessee, would say, hey, I had the right call on. We should have made the play. But the athlete, Todrick Malone, the ball's thrown, little curl route, well short of the first down. Now, Terry Fair just makes the tackle, but he falls down. Todrick Malone's ability, there he's going to do, get open, just a little hook, makes the catch, now upfield for the first down. Right over the running play. We'll take it down to the 10. It's going to be a gain of four. That could be the last play of this opening quarter as we're at 12 and now 11 seconds. Back to fair on a play like that when you've got 12 yards to pick up the first down. Almost smart to play it a little softer to make sure you keep him in front of you. Oh, Ron, you're, you're right. You don't make that kind of mistake as a defensive back. Well, that's the end of the first quarter with our score. Tennessee 21, Alabama nothing. With a concerned look on his face, uh, Phil Fulmer would just as soon see that goose egg stay up there as far as Alabama's concerned. But the Crimson Tide with a second down, and they need the ball around the four-yard line to pick up the first. Ready Kitchen wants to throw, loses the football, but they're going to say incomplete pass, or is it a fumble? It is a fumble and recovered by Tennessee. Jesse Sanders is the man who made the hit on him. Well, Ron, they jumped into a different look just before the snap of the football. John Chavis makes a move here just before the snap of the ball, and Jesse Sanders is going to come off the corner. And no one sees him, and he makes the hit on Freddie Kitchens. A great call by John Chavis. This Alabama didn't pick it up. You know what, Mike? I'm not so sure that the youngster wasn't trying to throw the ball. Well, I think he was. Like, yeah. I think he was. I just he did not see Sanders come from the backside after they stemmed into that defense. I think he thought he would get away with an incomplete pass, so I guess is the point I'm making. So they missed the opportunity to get points. Manning has it complete out to Marcus Nash, and it is uh, out to the 31-yard line. This is as good a performance as I've seen out of a college quarterback in a quarter and whatever we played, a minute, by Peyton Manning. He's right on the mark on his throws. He's making good decisions. He's checking off at the line of scrimmage, and against the defense, it's giving him a lot of different looks. Cedric Sanders, the junior out of Demopolis, was a cornerback. They moved him over to free safety. Tennessee with a running play. Not much there as it's hit at the line of scrimmage. Walters and Kelvin Moore. Peyton Manning tonight, 9 out of 13, and those two touchdowns. It was his highlights tonight. He in the first play of the game. He finds Joey Kent open down the middle for the touchdown. He came right back. Hit Marcus Nash on a corner route for a touchdown. Good throw, put a lot of air under the ball. And then what do you do? You great fake and you get one in with your feet. 
So back to live action. And that's how we stand. 21 to nothing. As Peyton goes back to a shotgun. And you can see Alabama showing blitz. Here they come. He fumbles the ball. Picks it up and tries to cut his losses as easily as, as he can as he's going to be hit. And let's check in with Mike Tirico. Well, Ron, thus far, hasn't been a great day for the SEC West. LSU was trailing Kentucky until a couple of moments ago when Pat Rogers comes up with the interception in the last minute. Is he going to run out of gas? No. 66-yard touchdown. Tigers in the locker room, up three at the half. Mike, that race was with an offensive lineman. That's the reason he still had enough to get some oxygen there. <laughs> just as the ball got away and that's what tennis that's what alabama's got to do they have got to get some pressure on. he's been sitting back in the pocket and having time to set up and throw well the best way to take the quarterback out of the game is make him go on his backside and ralph staten was a blitz number 41 they did get people in the face of peyton manning on that play larry benyon first punt of the night by tennessee coming after him. Good high-hanging spiral. No fair catch is called for and will have a return from the 23. Out to the 27-yard line. Goss with a 8-yard return. We'll be right back. Football game was played here in Birmingham. The balls, Beanie Feathers, and Crimson Tide's Johnny Kane punted the ball 40 times, if you could believe it. Feathers 21, Kane 19. But a punt deflected near the end zone by Tennessee determined the game. Balls won the Mud Bowl, 7-3. to three. Feathers, of course, one of the greats in Tennessee history. And Johnny Kane went on to be a defensive coach for Johnny Plott at Ole Miss and spent many years over there. They called him Johnny Hurricane. 40 punts in the ball game. Johnny Bott, one of the great ones. Yes. Pitching. Runs up out of the pocket. Has five yards. Can't get by the second tackler at the 35-yard line. Gallion will put a stop on him, and Alabama has a player shaken up at the 35. It's an interesting move by Gene Stallings and Homer Smith of bringing Freddie Kitchens into the ball game. Now, they didn't score the last time Alabama... Uh, Tennessee with a good move defensively and the blitz on and Freddie Kitchens fumbling the football, but uh, an interesting move. Mike, Ed Sism goes to the sideline. He has been bothered by an elbow injury and he was holding that right arm in. He'll try to get a report on him. Drop play to Riddle. Hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage. That's Duff, number 50. The sophomore out of Delran, New Jersey. Mike Adamley, let's check with you. Ron, everybody knows that Jay Barker was a great leader and a great quarterback, but the thing that's the most dramatic difference on Alabama's offense this year, there is no Sherman Williams. He was so quick, turned so many potentially disastrous plays into big gainers. They missed that speed. They missed that quickness. And I know, Coach Gottfried, you miss our painter from last year. I miss the painter. As you see Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator. What a big third down situation. Kitchens puts it on his hip as the pass complete as the Tennessee corner gambled on the play and Curtis Brown will have the reception in the first down at the 45. John, what Mike Adam was talking about too, Jay Barker as a quarterback here was 35-2-1. They missed Jay Barker. And they were behind seven times last year and uh, Jay Barker brought him back. And they couldn't get a backup quarterback in. Every game was so close. So you're looking at two really relatively inexperienced quarterbacks in Brian Bergdorf and Freddie Kitchens. Yep, you really are. 21 to nothing, our score. Tennessee leading Alabama, second quarter. Kitchens wants to throw out of the backfield. Not the almost intercepted. And let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? That was a close one there. Hey, Northwestern was down 11. They've rifled back a three-play, 39-yard drive. Capped by a Darnell Autry, 18-yard score. Valenzizzi has a couple of field goals. The Cats and the Gophers tied at 14. Mm -hmm. Interesting ball game. And, uh, the side we heard was from Mike Adamley down on the sideline. 11 minutes, 20 seconds. Left until halftime. Green will make the hit on Riddle as he went straight ahead around the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. 
this Tennessee defense has been maligned, as you see Todrick Malone come back in. Of course, they gave up the big points against uh, Florida, the Florida Gators, and, uh, and so this is a defense. So it's got some pretty good athletes. You're looking at Leonard Little there, who's playing down this year as a defensive lineman, number one. They've got some experience. Scott Guyon said they stayed around this last uh, early fall camp and uh, set some high goals. Gets in from the shotgun this time. Zings it over the middle. Has it complete the key. And it's close to the first down at the 45-yard line. Jonathan Brown defensively. Mike, one of the things that killed him as far as average was Florida had so many yards and points in that ball game, And they proved against a good Auburn team today at home that they can score lots and lots of points for. One thing about those Gators now, they've got a lot of receivers. There's Woody McCorby who uh, coaches the wide receivers talking to Gene Stallings. Of course, he's hooked up to Homer Smith who I think is really a sound offensive coach here at Alabama. They got it. When Tennessee walked through yesterday the team to the stadium you could tell they were confident. We talked to Peyton Manning we sat down with him and he just shared, he just uh, had that confidence about him and their players and coaches. And Alabama the same way the other day, they were very confident. But this was a very confident Tennessee team yesterday. Now you can see what happened. The tackle came, uh, came out of a stance. And it's, it's going to cost them. We have a dead ball foul. False start against the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, the host, Roy Firestone, sits down one-on-one uh, -on -one with some of the stars of the upcoming World Series. You can look forward to hearing from Greg Maddox, whose win last night put the Braves one game away from clinching the National League pennant. That's Tuesday, 7.30 Eastern Time, right here on ESPN. Two tight ends, Hape and Johnson, for the Crimson Tide. Waits, gets it away, and has it deep, and that's Todrick Malone. The way to attack a two-deep zone coverage is routes over the middle. That's the way you attack the two-deep coverages. And I think Todrick Malone's as good a receiver as we've seen this year in the SEC. He's just like the Florida receivers, the receivers at Georgia. He's got good hands and good speed and will make those catches over the middle. Kind of glides through his route. You see him catching the ball out in front rather than letting it get into his body. And it's good for 19 yards. Glad to report that Sism is okay. He's back in the lineup. Gets him scrambling. Pressure is on and they'll push him out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Bill Duff got a hand on him. Billy Barron, also in the 94, was applying good pressure. Difference in quarterbacks right now. Curtis Brown, a wide receiver. And I know Freddie Kitchens is the backup, and he's not getting a lot of practice time. Curtis Brown coming over the middle, wide open over the middle, just can't get him the football. So with the game, it's going to be a pickup of six, and now second down and nine. Draw play. Little breaks off the tackle down to the 20-yard line, and that is very close to the first down for the Crimson Tide. Good play by call by Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator. Maurice Belser, the left guard, number 64, with a nice block right there to turn Tyrone Hines out and open it up for Dennis Riddle to get close to the first down. You see the numbers on him through the first three games, 170 yards in the last two, 35 uh, carries for 165. And as we mentioned, he's a local youngster. He's from Tuscaloosa, only a sophomore. It's a big drive for Alabama, and they've got to get points, and they've got to get a touchdown. Cannot settle for a field goal in this situation. When you're playing against an offense like Tennessee, you've got to score seven. By the way, the longest rush by Alabama tonight is nine yards. That play. Then 
to see. Bringing those safeties up, they go with the running play, and Bill Duff hits Riddle, and it'll stop him down at the 17-yard line. Gene knows full well that they've got to get points on, on this drive right here. They've turned it over the last time they were in this position inside the 20-yard line, and they were setting up the throw. So the fans may not be wild about this thing aesthetically, but he's doing what he knows or he thinks they can get it into the end zone with. You see Tennessee switching into that odd front. Pass is caught at the 10-yard line. Chad Key, and that is enough for the Alabama first down. There's a difference, though, Ron. They jumped into that defense on that play, but Freddie Kitchens read it, and it was blocked properly, and the pass was thrown the outside to Chad Key, number 19. This, here's the jump. They, they move. They stem to a different defense. Now the offensive line changes the responsibilities. They picked it up. Got a good play called Chad Key with a catch. And you can see 22, Jesse Sanders, who were trying to bring him from the outside. They picked up that block Blocked this time. And it's a game of chess by both these coaching staffs. Kitchens is going to get a penalty. Did not get the playoff. Gene Stallings is absolutely livid on the far sideline. Ron, they've made so many mistakes penalties-wise. The two, last two games, they've had 28 penalties. Tonight, Please. they've hurt themselves. There's no foul. We have timeout. Timeout on Alabama. That's their first timeout. So timeout, no penalty. 21 to nothing, Tennessee. Right back. back hears him see here's Dennis Riddle he cannot hear the checkoff now he gets it from Freddie Kitchens but he, he when you make a play and you're going to check it off the line of scrimmage you've got to make sure you turn your running backs because they're behind you and can't hear you even if it's your home crowd even if it's your home crowd it's so noisy in a stadium there's, like this there's enough orange in here just to make it loud enough Kitchens sets on first down right over the middle had Curtis Brown, and they couldn't make connections. Like I thought it was close to catchable, but uh, couldn't hold on. George Kidd, who was playing with a cast on his hand. Let's take another look here. Curtis Brown, that same route that he missed him on just a minute ago, he hits him right in the hands. A little bit out there, but he still should have made that catch over the middle. And Curtis Brown is an excellent receiver, front off surgery. South Carolina. Kitchens on second down. Ball is tipped and is still caught by Curtis Brown. Tipped at the line of scrimmage. Brown came down with it, so the Crimson Tide will pick up, it looks like, three yards. And now it's third down. Todrick Malone is coming back to the huddle, and I'm sure he's going to tell Freddie Kitchens that I was open on that play if you just give it a little bit longer. open in the corner but they just didn't see him looks like shane burton number 84 got a piece of the ball at the line of script so here we come third down goal to go he wants to run and it's going to be tackled at about the three yard line by Hines. Probably the better runner of the two quarterbacks is Brian Bergdorf. Although Freddie Kitchens trying to tuck it down and go with it. Well, you can see where the ball is. Just inside the three-yard line. Chad Key is checking in. We do not see the kickers. And the home folks like it. The Bama folks are saying, yeah, let's try to put it in the end zone. It is fourth down and goal. And the crowd will tell you they get it in or not. I think that was a great play by Freddie Kitchens because I think he was going to throw the flare pass to the right to Dennis Riddle, but came off of it to find Chad Key open over the middle. Michael Clark 
Walker. Has it right down the middle. So let's take a break. 21 to 7, our new score. 6 10 left until halftime. Kind of his first touchdown pass of the 1995 season. 70 yards, 15 plays. Just under seven minutes needed by the Crimson Tide. Here's Watts kickoff. Wild thing hammers this one. This is going to be Summers on the one yard line. Just puts the head down and he'll take it out across the 22 yard line. Freddie Kitchens, you're going to see him go back and set up, and this play was designed. The first option was the flare pass. Stop it right here to Dennis Riddle coming out of the backfield, number 29. He looks over this side. Now watch as the play continues. Now he comes off and finds Chad Key, the secondary receiver, over the middle wide, wide open. A good job with his head, his eyes, and then going back to find Chad Key. And that's probably the reason he's in the ball game now. He's the better passer. He's down 21 points. He's following Homer Smith, riding with Freddie Kitchens. Chad Key, an interesting story. He's a quarterback, but he came here and just said, wherever you put me, as long as I play it, so he's a wide receiver he's going to next one go. Joey Kent right across the middle. It's going to be good for about four yards as Walters is there to put the stop on him. Shannon Brown putting a little pressure on Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning said he's a he's a great defensive lineman. He didn't practice a lot this week, has a hamstring pull, yet he's playing in this football game tonight. Always has he's going hundred miles an hour. 10 to 15, 187. Two touchdowns for Peyton Manning. And now they say officially a two-yard gain to the second and eight. Manning's pass, did he get it or did he trap it? The official says, well, they're looking at each other. They don't know either. And Alabama says he didn't catch it. A little bit indecisive over there. Now they say incomplete pass. A little slow move by the officials over there on that play. So it's going to be third down. And if they want to keep this drive going, they need to move it out to the 33-yard line. Mike, to me, the biggest difference that Alabama has done defensively is they're finally getting pressure on the quarterback, which they didn't at all in the first quarter. Getting a little pressure on him, and there's, again, Bill Oliver, some master of disguising his defense, doing a little bit better job now, Alabama. Here comes the blitz. The two middle backers, Peyton runs up, gets it away, and it's almost intercepted at the 30, and it's dropped as Kevin Jackson had cut in front. And, folks, that would have been a sure seven. Well, you talk about what to try to do to a quarterback when you decide to blitz. Ralph State, number 41, blitzes. And when you blitz a quarterback, the receivers have a shorter route to run sometimes. Now, also, the defensive backs understand that. Here comes the blitz now. They're bringing backers. Dwayne Rudd's coming. Now Peyton Manning starts to move out. His receiver makes the short adjustment. Peyton makes the mistake, throws the ball, almost picked off. Binion's kick. This is to Goss. He's going to let it bounce. Then tries to pick it up and has to cover it at the 32. Very dangerous decision. Ron, I want to go back to the decision that Gene Stallings made putting Freddie Kitchens in this ball game because I said, I thought he put him in for a spark, and I think he's got that spark. The defense is playing better now. They've settled down a little bit for the Alabama. They've got a better read on this Tennessee offense, and Freddie Kitchens has just added a little bit in this ball game, and I think he's brought Alabama back. Situation, we have four minutes and 50 seconds left until halftime. Tennessee on top 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. But the Crimson Tide came back with seven here in the second and had the ball again. Kitchens gets away from the pressure and his pass just a little too far. He was looking for Curtis Brown. That was a one receiver route by Alabama. There was not another receiver out on that play. And sometimes what you do is, Bill Walsh was the person that started doing this out. Uh, for the 49ers, you really do a good job of selling the fake and your whole team, your lineman, your tight end, and you send one receiver out on that route. And that was open for Curtis Brown. He just overthrew it. Kitchen puts it in the stomach of Riddle. Has five, 
his 10, headed off at 15, 16, and 17 yards as Jerron Jenkins will finally put the stop on him. And all of a sudden, some vitamins as far as the Crimson Tide offense is concerned. Well, this was a great look and play by Freddie Kitchen. Steps back, John Causey, the center with a good block. Dennis Riddle, good draw on the Tennessee defense. And you're right, the 10 years of frustration, frustrations hitting Tennessee again a little bit as the crowd and the crowd from Alabama is, is back in this thing with Freddie Kitchen. 18 yards in the play. Kitchen puts it up on top. Curtis Brown is out there. Did he hold on? No. He dropped the football as the defensive back for the Volunteers had fallen down. What happened on this play, Curtis Brown on the previous second play ago ran a corner route now he comes back and he's going to fake the corner route and break down to the post on Corey Gaines number 30 see the fake to the corner now he breaks to the post and you talk about open Corey Gaines fell down and uh, that thing was wide open just couldn't get him the football look he almost stretched out and made that catch looked like the first guy out to the workout oh, oh my goodness complete at the 30-yard line of Tennessee. Tell you what, Alabama is hot right now. Now, tell you why they're hot. They're hot because of Freddie Kitchen. Freddie Kitchen just come in this ball game. He's doing what Peyton Manning did in the first quarter. He's hiding the football. He's doing a good job of the play action. He's playing with a lot of confidence, and his offense believes in him now. I'll tell you. They just threw another quarter route. Good fake. Todrick Malone wide open again. And Freddie Kitchens just pumped new life into this Alabama team. Heath and Rutledge, two tight ends of the ball game for Alabama. Short drop pass overthrown. Curtis Brown, I think, is the man that he wanted. And Tennessee had just jumped around up front and uh, shown that, that same look on the defensive line. Mike Adamley, let's check with you. Ron and Mike, you might have noticed that uh, Tennessee's outstanding linebacker Scott Galeon, not in the game right now. He suffered a concussion on Tennessee's last defensive series. They're not sure that he's going to be able to play again. The neurologist is going to look at him at halftime, but right now he is hugging everybody saying, keep going, I might not be back. He cannot remember a thing from the first quarter on. Riddle tries to get outside, and he'll be wrapped up. George Kidd with a nice job defensively for the Volunteers. It's going to go for a yard loss. This is an interesting game tonight because it's strength versus strength. Tennessee's offense, Alabama's defense, and then it's an Alabama offense has struggled against the Tennessee defense. It's had some problems in some ball games. I think they played very well tonight as, as you look at Scott Galling, the linebacker. So it's third down. And they need to take it to the 20-yard line to pick up the first. About to go into three minutes until intermission time. You see the roll of five. Wanted to throw the shovel pass. Tennessee cut it off at the pass. And Jonathan Brown will knock him out of bounds after a pickup of a couple. And now let's see. Will the Crimson Tide go for the distance field goal or will they cut it away? Looks like Proctor will come on. His longest in his career is 53 yards. That was against Ole Miss in 1993. Seven of seven this year. His longest, 45. This attempt, a 45 yard. Long enough and wide to the left, no good. Tip off the 95 college basketball season with Midnight Madness with Whitman in action. Graham in the running play. Takes it over the right side for maybe five yards. Now the truth of the matter is, until that missed...
field goal just a moment ago. Alabama had wrestled the momentum away from Tennessee, and that momentum had been sizable. Now it is, I think, important for Tennessee to move this thing down here and uh, show a little muscle again, don't you? I think it's very important, Ron, for Peyton Manning to take this 232 and make most of it for the running game. Just no Eric Lane, the fullback, will be short of the 35-yard line. And now it's going to be a third down situation for Tennessee, and they still need about three and a half yards. percent for Tennessee tonight in third down conversion. Got a man. I don't know if he made the read. It's Joey Kent. And that was an audible at the line of scrimmage because of what Alabama showed, but what a nice touch and pass. What it was was a three-step drop, just a quick pass, but Peyton Manning saw that the corner rolled up. Number 11's rolling up Brad Ford, so now he waits for Joey Kent to get behind him. Just an easy throw for Peyton Manning. Joey Kent rolled up, safety has to come over the top. Peyton Manning with a good throw. So it's 23 yards, and Mike, that puts him over 200 yards in his first half. Doesn't see the Alabama player from behind. Ball is loose, who got it? Alabama says they did. Kelvin Moore is the man who sneaked around and hit him, and the officials say, nope, it's Tennessee football. That was a three-man rush, is all that was by Alabama. They were in coverage right here, but a good job by Kelvin Moore working around. You see the three-man rush, two linebackers in the middle. It's a pass defense all the way. But Kelvin Moore came right around Jarris Rito, number 72, to make that play. Wide rush, number 95, Kelvin Moore with a big play of Peyton Manning. Officially, that goes as a sack result for a loss of one. Manning's pass has it complete out in the flat, working for the first down, and I'll tell you, Maurice Staley is very, very close. That's Fernando Bryant who made the tackle on him, but let's see what that side judge is going to give him. All the time. Tennessee. So Martin Tennessee out calls out. a timeout. And we'll take the break. 51 seconds left until the halftime. Don't go away. 21 to 7, Tennessee leads. Ron Franklin with Mike Gottfried and Mike Adamley. And 51 seconds left until the halftime. We have somebody charting man and zone tonight. Peyton Manning against the man-to-man -man coverage and blitz of Alabama. 67 yards and a touchdown against zone coverage. Well, Alabama's switching up. He's 6 for 7 where he's got a little more time to throw. 155 yards and a touchdown. So let's draw a line. His total, 12 of 19, 223 yards and two touchdowns. And he ran one in as well. I think when the Alabama staff looks at the numbers, we're going to see a lot more man coverage rather than zone in the second half, don't you? Three-man rush here. Another zone coverage play here. He may check to a run. Backside pressure, got his man right over the middle at the five. Touchdown, Marcus Nash. Got him right down the middle again, Ron, just like the first play of the game. It was the exact same play. Only a different receiver now. Marcus Nash in front of the safety and right behind the linebacker. And the reason they're able to do that is they're spreading the field. They're spreading Alabama out so far on defense. It's open for Marcus Nash inside. Tennessee's going to have to call a timeout here. We're going to hold it right here. As Marcus Nash is going to work inside this safety right here for Alabama. And you see the linebackers inside. He's going to get right in between the linebackers and then the safety. 
And that's Cedric Samuel, number 13, missing, and then Deshae Townsend missing a tackle. Peyton Manning eyeing up the receiver all the way, Marcus Nash, right behind those linebackers. And then just poor tackling by Alabama. Mike, he is now 7 of 8 against zone coverage, and that brings him total yardage, 253 yards in the first half. 65%, 13 of 20. What did you say his dad threw for here tonight or, uh, when he played in Birmingham? 468, I believe. I'm going to have to go back and check the number. I happen to file that, and it's <laughs> filed at a place I can't get I to it. it Blown out it the, might have uh, been file 13. <laughs> I, think it, I think it blew down to the field. Mike Adams has got it. So the extra point attempt now. Jeff Hall. Good pass. Kick it is good, and let's go down to the sideline to check with Mike Adamy. I think he's got those numbers handy. Well, right? here you guys go. 26 years ago here at Legion Field, the other Manning was making a name for himself. He, of course, Archie, one of the great singular performances in college football history. Manning responsible for 540 yards of total offense and five touchdowns. He ran for two scores and then riddled the Bama secondary for 436 yards, passing three of those touchdown passes. It was also the very first college football game ever televised in prime time on ABC. What a night for Archie. I have a feeling. I know that Archie and Olivia are here tonight, but uh, Archie probably has popped a button or two here in this first half with, with the first half that this youngster has had. Uh, I mean, he literally, he has 87% of their offense. He'd be smart. He would not wear buttons to any game because he's going to pop them all year. <laughs> By the way, coming up next to the GMAC halftime report, we'll have an SEC recap. Also, Notre Dame gets quite a scare. And Northwestern Magic, all about and more, coming up on the GMAC Halftime Report. Well, this is a coverage kick. It's going to come down to the tight end, Thompson. Johnson, I think it's like Tony Johnson, and he will return it to the 40-yard line. And Bama will have 38 seconds left to work with. Still have two timeouts, so they've got good field position to try to move this football. 28 to 7, Tennessee. A couple key plays for Alabama in that last drive with the missed interception that they had on Peyton Manning. They had that interception when they pressured him and their inability to score the last time down the field. Tennessee with only a three man rush. And Kitchens going to be hit from behind and he'll go down at the 40. Steve White. The senior out of Memphis, number 64, gets to him, and the timeout is now called for by Alabama. 28 seconds. Just a three-man rush, but nothing was open. A lot of coverage. Dropped eight people, Tennessee, in the coverage on the last play, and there was just was no place for Freddie Kitchens to find and throw the football. ESPN is your home for college football again next Saturday. At 11.30, we get things going on college game day. At 12.30, Ohio State takes on Purdue. At 7.30, Kansas visits Oklahoma. Scores and highlights on the Residence Inn College Scoreboard. Be anxious to see KU next week as uh, they travel into Norman. Oklahoma with a big come from behind today. They were down 21 to nothing. Came back and tied that game against arch rival Texas at 24. Ron, when you talk about quarterbacks, you talk about levels and you talk about grades and, and where they're at. But uh, I said this at the start and I'm going to stick with it. This young man right here, Peyton Manning, is further along right now than any other college quarterback in the country. Ability-wise, intelligence-wise, and understanding the Tennessee system. Travis Redo, the young man he was talking to there, is also from Louisiana, from Marrero, Louisiana. And uh, he was put into a starting position tonight. As left tackle. Kitchens, I think at the last second, Leonard Little was putting a lot of pressure on it. The last second, I think he saw that, that uh, safety come over, and he just threw it into the ground. Leonard Little, of course, signed with uh, Tennessee out of, out of high school and came to Tennessee, and then he told him he was a point short academically, so he had to go to junior college, and when we were up there for the Georgia game, he said it was like a stake in my heart. I wanted to go to Tennessee, and then now they're telling me I couldn't go, and 
When it came time to come back, it was mom talking into going back to Tennessee because she wanted to see him play. What a huge hit causing a fumble back in the first quarter. Kittens out of the backfield. He'll have it complete. That's Sism. Tennessee still has a couple timeouts if they want to force the punt. One second, they'll get this final play away. Nope, going to be set. Back at the 37-yard line, Billy Barron comes in to end the first half. Our score, Tennessee 28, Alabama 7. Now let's join Mike Tirico for the GMAC Halftime Report. Michael. All right, Ron, has not been a good day for the home teams in the state of Alabama. Jeff Hall to kick it off, and we're underway here in the second half. Crimson Tide, as West returns it from the seven, drops the ball momentarily, trying to see if they can get something going. Well, Mike, what do you gather from these numbers right here? It uh, doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what's happening, does it? Well, the difference has been paid Manning, and there's one big play in that first half. Alabama had a chance for an interception and dropped that football, which would have just completely turned this game right around. He might have even had an opportunity to score because he was in really good position coming down the sideline. Freddie Kitchens, 9 out of 16 the first half. Gave a little spark, but then kind of fizzled out a little bit as we close to the half. Kitchens is throwing first down. Put the air under this one and can't get it to Curtis Brown. It'll become a second half of throwing the football for Alabama. A team that hasn't thrown the ball well this year. Kind of forces you out of your game plan early when you go down 21 to nothing in the first quarter, doesn't it? Well, it does, but you can't. It's, it's tough to mix the run with the pass, especially with Peyton Manning sitting on the sideline waiting to come back. You've got to get some big plays and get some big plays out of Malone and Curtis Brown. Whoa. Mix up in the backfield. He was looking for the back on the other side, and Kitchens at least winds up with positive yardage, but it's going to be a third down and eight. Freddie Kitchens just somehow bust on this play. He, he looked the wrong side to give the draw to Dennis Riddle. Bust from the start of that play. Steve White, Billy Barron on the tackle. Alabama does not want to have to go one, two, three and punt this ball right back Wrong to the ball. From the shotgun, Kitchens has his man. Brown will have the first down at the 38-yard line. Terry Fair comes over to make the tackle on him. 13 yards. Made the completion right in front of Terry Fair. Terry Fair was recruited out of Phoenix by Larry Marmy, who was then the head coach at Arizona State. Came to Tennessee as a defensive coordinator and knew about Terry, recruited his brother, and talked him into coming to the University of Tennessee. And he's played a very good defensive back for Tennessee. as it complete again Curtis Brown working Curtis Brown on Terry Fair again came back with a short post against Terry Fair here they've been able to run the corner route now it fakes you see the outside position by Terry Fair and Curtis Brown took it inside and a good throw by Freddie Kitchens this is such a big drive right here otherwise they don't score here the track meet begins I believe ball resting at midfield Tennessee shows a blitz. They stay at home. Kitchens has another one complete. This time it's Chad Key. That's good for 11 yards. So the sequence of plays, 13, 11, and 11 yards. And there's still the draw is there for Dennis Riddle. They like to run the draw Alabama just to slow down the rush. But this is going to become a passing game all the way for Freddie Kitchens. The only run I expect much of is the draw. Chad Key over the middle, number 19 against Tyrone Hines, the middle linebacker. And Chad is injured. He is still down on the field, and uh, we've had to stop play here as uh, the trainers have come out to check him over. Gene Stallings, I think, has done a nice job this year 
because of the focus of the program, they've had the NCAA problems. They've got all that pending against him, yet he's been able to take his ball club and worry about the games on the field. There have been an inordinate number of distractions. No question about that. Chad Key, and they're having to help him off the field. He has four catches tonight for one touchdown, total 29 yards. So it's first down. The new line of scrimmage, the Tennessee 39-yard line. And now the officials have dropped a flag. We have a dead ball foul, substitution infraction against the offense, five-yard penalty, still first in. What happens on that run is the play, they have 12 men in the huddle, mm -hmm. and somebody runs off late. Again, penalty problems for Alabama, averaging 9.8 nine and nine penalties against in the SEC. They two weeks ago, the South, they set a new school record. He had 16 two ball games ago. That'll make your offense struggle. Yeah. Robert Malone, a good look at him. His kitchen's pressure is on. And Kitchens is going to be sacked. And he went down in an awkward position. I hope the youngster is okay. Gallion obviously is okay as he's back in the lineup. And Freddie is a little bit slow in getting up. Problem with throwing the ball all the time. What you have to do right now is the defensive line just pins their ears back. And they bring a linebacker from the outside. Scott Gallion, number 93 make the sack on Freddie Kitchens. You can see Bill Duff, number 50, also coming in to help. Duff has had a good game tonight. Loss of six. Intercepted by Fair. The young man that Mike was just talking about, and he brings it back to the 43-yard line. He only hit that corner route so many times, and uh, Terry Fair just played this perfectly, Ron. This is double coverage on Curtis Brown. Curtis, Terry Fair is right inside of him. Now the safety's deep, and the ball is just thrown right where Terry Fair can intercept it. He just puts his shoulder down and tries to go through Curtis Brown. So Tennessee back on offense. in front. Tyler can't get by that last tackler, Samuel. And let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, at the end of halftime, we told you that Northwestern had taken the lead. Steve Schnur back in there. Gives to Darnell Autry. Scampers 11 yards for the score. Once down 14-3. Northwestern now leads with 18 unanswered points. No longer the mile catch. Playing very well. Terry Fair. Uh, listening as they draw up the Alabama offensive plays. Manning on a quick count, gives the ball to Graham, tries to get it outside, does break by one tackler. It'll take it for a couple more yards to the 42. Fernando Graham finally put the stop on. You're going to run the eye attack. You need good blocking out of the fullback. Chester Ford, number 20, just with a crushing block at the line of scrimmage to open it up for Jay Graham. 28 to 7 if you just joined us. Tennessee leading Alabama. In the history of this game, the last 10 years is a team that makes the turnovers losers, and it's Alabama tonight making the turnovers. Alabama, Deshae Townsend was shaken up, and they were trying to get him off the field, so they had to call a timeout. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more after this. Good job of uh, running defense by Alabama. John Walters, number 90, and Chris Hood, 34, are there to put the stop on that, along with Curley down at the bottom of the park. Take a look at the numbers on Graham on the ball game tonight. 35 yards on nine attempts. Haven't had to run the football tonight. They just had the passing games been there for Peyton Manning. Jeff Smith at 
senior. Obviously, Alabama thought they saw something. At least Kelvin Moore sure did because well, even if you don't see anything, you still point. <laughs> you don't want to be embarrassed. Kelvin Moore, number 95, is going to fall start on the offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. It's only two penalties against Tennessee tonight. Really didn't see anybody move on that play, but Kelvin Moore must have to make that move that he made. You look at the offensive line, you see a lot of movement there. Kelvin Moore, number 95, got away. Mm -hmm. Right over the middle. He's got his tight end. That's Dustin Moore, and he will take it inside the 40, and this is very close to another Tennessee first down. Dustin Moore, just Peyton Manning's fake into the outside as he gets a snap. He's going to fake like he's throwing outside. Now he finds Dustin Moore over the middle and just a little late delay to the, to the tight end. Real close to that first down marker. Dustin's a freshman, Jonesboro, Georgia. 6'3", 226. Doesn't have it. About two links to the chain. So it's fourth down. And with that short distance to go, Tennessee will go for it. Leading 28 to 7. Straight ahead, and he picked up two links to the chain there. It'll be a first down volunteers. Use that 6 5 frame on the quarterback sneak. He won't gain as many yards as Archie tonight running the football. But he may surpass the pass. You know, as you mentioned, it, he has grown taller. He's actually about 6 5 and a half now. And we discussed at the Georgia game. I kiddingly said something about his speed, but he's grown so quickly. I think more mobility will come for him as he stops growing so quickly. Graham actually gets hit from behind and knocked forward. Kevin Jackson will get credit for the tackle. You can see him creeping up the line of scrimmage. An interesting story last year when they played UCLA and Peyton was a freshman. His dad told him, he said, if you get in the ball game, now you take over that huddle. And he said, went in for the first time and he said he called the play and he told him, he said, we can make this and we can take it for a touchdown. He said, one of the linemen said, shut up and call the play. And uh, he said, I called the play. And he said, now, he said, I've had a better grasp and they respect me a little bit more. He says, nobody's saying shut up anymore. It was Jason Lehman. He just looked at him and said, shut up, freshman, and called the play. <laughs> We don't want a pet talk right now. <laughs> Let's have him out on the flat to his tight end. That's Pfeiffer. And Scott is going to have maybe four yards in the play. Looks like Kevin Jackson. Well, he's okay. Came over to make the tackle. Good hit by Kevin Jackson. Made the play. He had three intercepts against Georgia. He's a young man we talked about. Wanted to come to Alabama. Wound up going to junior college now is here and uh, for just such a short time of the defense has responded extremely well. They've had corners. They had Mark McMillan came from junior college. Of course, he's playing with the Philadelphia Eagles now. Came in and played two years here at Alabama and they expect the same thing out of Kevin Jackson. Third down. Line today. The 26 and a half yard line. Looks on the outside in the pass. Obviously, it was an audible. And obviously, the receiver did not get it. And Murray Staley did not uh, get the signal or the audible either from uh, Peyton Manning because Peyton Manning was throwing the short slant pass and Murray Staley was working down the field a little bit more. So a mistake by the Tennessee offense. Tennessee might want to think about a field goal here. They're talking that over on the sideline. So as they talk it over, let's take a break. 28 to 7, Tennessee will be right back. It's easy to see why Ford has had five of the deep in their offense to make a mistake. Larry Binion will come on to punt it away. Only 
the third punt for Tennessee tonight. Alabama did not decline that penalty. They'll have to take that. Better for the punting team, obviously. They got the pressure on, and they cause him to kick it sky high. The Tennessee is all around the ball. Let's see if they can down it. And yes, they're going to at the two-yard line. Pillow is the man who touches it down. Catch NFL game day on Sunday when Boomer left to play third quarter. Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. And they have now spotted it at the three rather than the two. The local folks want to get excited about something. They'd like to see this offense come alive here. Looking from his own end zone. Going to go on top. And he's looking from alone. And now here comes the flag. I think this is going to be on Alabama, on Todrick Malone. See how they call it. <laughs> well, Todrick Malone used his hands on this play against Terry Fair. Todrick Malone just stretches out his hands and pushes Terry Fair. Again, the same route where you only have really one receiver out, tailbacks the safety valve. See Todrick Malone use his hands against Terry Fair. See him running. Now he pushes him. Yeah, hands both ways there. Terry Fair had his hands all over Todrick Malone, too. Also lost a shoe. He stepped on his heel. Yeah, Pat Fair, the against the offense. Penalized half the distance from the goal from the previous spot. Still first in. Partisan's not real happy about that ball. Sism will take it out in the vicinity of the five-yard line. Tennessee defense tonight has made some plays. They've been able to stay in pretty good position and make Alabama work the field, make some mistakes. Pretty good plan by John Chavis. Jesse Sanders, number 22. He's been nicked a little bit. Back in the lineup, you see, has that Darth Vader look with that uh, dark colored screen over his head here. Kitchens is running back Riddle short of the first down. They're going to give him the 13 yard line. Freddie Kitchens out of the shotgun gives him a better look at the defense. Dennis Riddle just releases late. Jesse Sanders on the play, and as you said, real close to the first down marker. Didn't need a yard yet. So it's third down. Good decision by Phil Fulmer going back to punting the football and forcing Alabama out of their own end zone. Riddle hit hard at the line of scrimmage. I think he's going to have the first down. Yeah, but where they... Linesman on the near side runs in to mark it. He will. But that's uh, Gallion who makes the hit on him. Good surge by the Tennessee defense. Good block by Ed Sissom. Dennis Riddle just picks up the first down. the pass overthrown and now here comes a late flag back at the 17 yard line they have a lineman downfield it may be the call where that's thrown or holding of course for the umpire or was he beyond the line when he threw it mike no i think no, a lineman, lineman got downfield. Was downfield sure was see the frustration in gene stallings coming in given the signal of the formation so that the substitutions know who to come in and uh, who has to, to leave the field so that the quarterback only has to make the play call save some time Leonard Little number one sophomore out of Asheville North Carolina he was not 
up to speed last week. He had to have uh, a tooth pulled. It was not 100 percent against Arkansas. There's Malone. He is split out to the right. Pickens. He'll be sacked at the five-yard line. Billy Barron is a man who'll get credit for it. And there's a flag down on the far side of the field. Looked like Jonathan Brown there used his legs. And maybe leg Watch kicked uh, Freddie Kitchens. Number 91's coming in from the backside against sure three. Did. Number 63 is able to use his feet kick, which is not legal. And uh, Freddie Kitchens started to fall to the ground. Yeah, here it comes right there. He just tripped him. against the defense five yard penalty from the previous spot replay first down you know this game has has really since the second quarter has really had a lot of penalties twenty eight to seven with uh, just about to go under six minutes left in the third quarter For good reason. Noel almost took his head off. I'm not sure Noel knows exactly where he is as well. Well, he feels a lot better than Curtis Brown does because Curtis Brown was hung up in the air. It's against two deep coverage where he gets away. Now he's in between number nine, the safety, Tory Noel, and then it's caught up in the air there. Tory Noel with a good hit. He's still shaking his head. Yeah, that's right. Birmingham, Texas. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Kitchens right over the middle has Malone. Crosses the 30 and he's out to the 35. Raymond Austin right on top of him, but it's good for 20 yards. He goes back to field position again where Phil Fulmer punted the football, got Alabama inside the five, and here they're now just getting to their own 40-yard line. Good throw by Kitchens to Todrick Malone, but you play the field position game and make the offensive team go 80, 90 yards, and you figure they're going to make a mistake along the way. Malone with four catches tonight. Well, they had 13 last week are in the ball game against uh, Arkansas. Kitchens does not feel the backside pressure, and he's going to finally be stopped by Tyrone Hines. Shane Burton was the first one in on Freddie Kitchens to force him out of the pocket. Freddie Kitchens can't, doesn't look like he's making the decision quick enough to decide to, he wants to run with the football. Now that's good for 11 yards. And the new line of scrimmage out at the 46. Alabama's decision tonight to go with Freddie Kitchen probably elevates him to the starting quarterback position. He's played, looks like he's hurt. So let's take a timeout. 5.03 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Get an injury timeout, Mike, they were, because the right contact of Kitchens came out. They have just replaced it over on the sideline. Also, checking into the ball game as you watch them making the, the change. Contact lands. Montoya Madden, number 21, comes into the backfield for the Crimson Tide. Pass is complete. Just short of the 40 yard line, it's Curtis Brown, and Terry Fair makes the tackle on him. Pretty good, pretty good coverage by Terry Fair. He's right on top of Curtis Brown, but a good strike by Freddie Kitchens. Had a lot on that football. Marcel West, the junior out of Knightsville, Florida, comes into the lineup. That was a gain of 12 in that last play. Phil Fulmer's ball club jumped out on top 21 to nothing in the first quarter. Showing blitz. Let's see if they come. Yep, they do. That's Samuel from behind. Montoya Madden got to be hit and dropped for a loss. Little along with Gallia. Well, that was a uh, 
option play from the start, and there really wasn't any concern about Freddie Kitchens carrying this football. Leonard Little will start down. Now he reads the option. Now look at his ability to accelerate, come out and make the play on Matt. Sanders, number 22. You could see him coming off the corner, but they took it away from him. And it is uh, a loss of two. Little going to get a breather for a moment. Surprised that Kitchens could get that one away at all. You could see 64, Steve White hanging all over it and seemed to be pulling on his jersey just as he was throwing the ball. Might have been fortunate he didn't throw it to somebody else. It was good pressure by Steve White, the senior defensive end, 6'2", 246 on Freddie Kitchens. Steve leads the team in big plays, and he has five sacks this year. Got around Sage screen number 63. Third down, the line to make the Tennessee 33. <laughs> they got it, Curtis Brown. 14 yards in the pass play. Pretty, pretty good designed uh, pass play. What Alabama uses was used Dennis Riddle, number 29, to come out of the backfield and really opened it up. He was able to come out. You see number 29 come out. He brought the linebacker with him, and it opened Curtis Brown inside. There's just nobody there. Here comes the blitz up the middle. Kitchens is hit. Gets by one tackle. Pursuit from behind. Throws it complete to Sism. And he's got more than he can say grace over. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike. <laughs> uh, good to hear that again, Ron. Here come the Northwestern Wildcats. They've exploded against Minnesota. Darnell Autry, who has four touchdowns on the year, has three tonight, including the 73-yarder. Extra point missed. First time Sam Valenzizzi's done that this year, but Northwestern's up 13. Ooh, that's a nice stiff arm. Started it at the eight-yard line and was able to kind of keep him at bay with that jab. <laughs> Throw. As the receiver fell down, Todrick Malone, that turned into a very dangerous situation because the Tennessee defensive back, had he been able to get over to it, that was six from 80 yards away. Good coverage by Deron Jenkins, but again, you're right, Todrick Malone, number 80, tries to come out of his break on the out and just falls down, slips. He'd come out from under him, and he would have been open on that play. This drive started back at the three. This is the 13th play of it. Well, that's what you want to do if you're Tennessee. Force them into going the long field, use a lot of time, and then maybe make a mistake along the way. Pass is tipped and caught. Tad Key after the ball was tipped by Tennessee. Key comes down with it. Tad Key stayed with this football. He never gave up on this play. It really makes a big catch for this Alabama offense. Freddie Kitchens throwing the football. Chad Key involved in coverage right here with Steve Johnson. But Chad Key never gave up on that play. He was able to take his eyes to the football and bring it in for the catch. First down at the Tennessee 15-yard line. Lips coming from up the middle and also the outside. They go with a fade route that is completely out of the end zone. Stops the clock with 2.12 left in the third. It was a blitz by Tennessee, but uh, Ed Sissom picked it up, and Freddie Kitchens really had time here. He just he threw the ball too soon. You're going to see the blitz, and you're going to see Hines come in here. It gets picked up. It's blocked. It's very well blocked. Uh, Freddie Kitchens really has got more time than he thinks. Here's the block by Sissom. So he's not being challenged. Curtis Brown may have had a collision on that play. It wasn't out there. Montoya Madden breaks off the tackle, has five, has ten, counted off as a touchdown, Alabama. Particularly watching Madden in the last game as a freshman out of Town Creek. 
I, they're going to have to get him playing more. He's only 5'9", but boy, he squares his shoulders and knows what to do with the football north and south. Well, he was able to keep his balance there. He, there was nothing up inside. It's when he bounced outside, he used to speed for the touchdown. Parker with an extra point attempt, and he's got him. 2.04 left in the third quarter. Get to Montoya, Madden, number 21, a missed tackle by Ron Green. He was able to break outside, and that's where the speed comes in handy. Into the end zone, into the corner for the Alabama touchdown. Also strength as he pulled through that initial tackle at the line of scrimmage. Now, all of a sudden, this crowd is aroused. It's a two-touchdown game. That's a nice drive by Alabama. Freddie Kitchens with good quarterbacking. 97 yards. Yeah, that's a very, very good drive. Took a lot of time, but a good drive. That's a 15-play drive. 97 yards for the touchdown. Big play, and that series is Chad Key's catch for that deflection. He was able to stay with that football, made that catch, and kept the Alabama offense moving. So watch. The man they call Wild Thing will kick it off. Summers, the deep man for Tennessee. From the six. Summers gets tagged just before he reaches the 25-yard line. Now, let's see if the momentum by the offense transmits over to the defense. Well, the last time you said that, Peyton Manning answered quickly with a touchdown, so let's see if he can do it again. Alabama defense looking for the turnover. Here comes a corner blitz. They go to the running play. Graham for five, ten, breaks it off, and he's open. This is the best way to quiet 80,000 of your close or not close friends. Touchdown, Tennessee. It's 75 yards. And when you see a play like that happen into the short side of the field, usually you're going to find a receiver with a good block. And Joey Kent made that block on that play for J.J. Graham. With, with a hug for his tailback, Jay Graham, and why not? Alabama was showing signs of getting back into this football game, and boy, did Tennessee have a quick answer. Paul makes it 35 to 14. Bob's here. offense give to Jay Graham he bounces it outside Joey Kent number 11 seals the corner inside now the speed of Jay Graham becomes the factor as he silences this crowd here at Alabama with the long touchdown run also got a nice block by Scott Pfeiffer the tight end number 89 Mike Adamley, let's check in with you down on the sideline. We well, you know Jay Graham for the last three years was an understudy to James Stewart and Aaron Hayden and Charlie Garner, but he bided his time. He came from North Carolina, where in high school he was a great runner in a veer offense, and believe it or not, his coach is Randy Sanders, the running backs coach for Tennessee, said this guy is still learning. He looks great tonight. That is over 100 yards with that last run. And 21 seconds after Alabama scored, Tennessee comes right back, and they're in the end zone, and it's back to a 21-point margin. <laughs> Jeff Hall, the freshman out of Winchester, Tennessee. This is West, two yards deep. 
He'll be knocked out at the 22. Mr. Tarico, let's check back with you. Ron, this is not an overstatement. Here's the best touchdown of the entire year. UCLA up on Arizona by 10. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar catches the screen. I gave it away. I shouldn't have told you this was a touchdown. Look at the great block on Teddy Bruschi. He's not done yet. Abdul-Jabbar back the other way. Amazing touchdown. UCLA's defense also getting the job done, shutting out Arizona. What a play. Ron? I've never seen a 200-yard run before. I think I just did. What an effort. Getting pressure. Get by the first man. Will not get by Bill Duff. And four times tonight, Tennessee has sacked Alabama quarterbacks. Bill Duff set him up, and Leonard Little took him down. Freddie Kitchens with the play fake, but everybody knows it's going to be pass time for Alabama. Leron White to guard. Bill Duff gets by Leron White, and Leonard Little finishes off Freddie Kitchens. Loss of eight on the play. Kitchens almost intercepted. Couldn't hold on to it. That's Terry Fair, almost got his second pick of the night. Played the route of Curtis Brown here. For some reason, he sat right on this route. He did not move off the curl. Sitting right there with him, got his hands all over Curtis Brown. In great shape for the interception, just dropped the football. If Curtis hadn't grabbed his arm, he would have had a second interception. Mike, I know they're jumping around and giving some different looks defensively. But to me, the biggest difference between the, the Tennessee defense that we saw against Georgia and the one we're seeing tonight is so much more push, so much more pressure by the front people. Well, they're making the work the field, too. They're not giving anything easy to Alabama. Chad Key, the intended receiver. That one's overthrown. And again, Kitchens winds up on his backside. Shane Burton, this time, is the man who hit him. ESPN is your home for college football again. Standing back in the one. Summers, the deep man for Tennessee. Summers gets by one. Will not get by the second Crimson Tide player, but he'll take it across midfield. That's 43 yards on the kick. Summers returns to the left. We got 38 seconds left in this third quarter. I think Manning had 253 yards in the first half. Check him to see what he's uh, got now. That's a lateral. That ball can be thrown again. It is, and it is caught at the 18-yard line by Kyler. Oh, that was set up perfect. Great Kyler with a great catch because Deshae Thompson got beat early but was able to come back and try to make that play. Nash is going to just step. There's the move by Kyler, number 80. Thompson on him, recovers. Good concentration by Greg Kyler. Good for 28 yards. It goes to the 19. And he's pass got him right over the middle. Marcus Nash on that quick slant, and that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Clock stops because of the chain moved, and then they'll whistle it back in. Tennessee does not have to hurry at all because now it's running. Three seconds and down to two. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Tennessee 35, Alabama 14. Top here. They've still got another quarter to play, but the volunteer fans are, are mighty happy. Well, the defense has allowed only one 300 yard passing game. That was a 91 Fiesta Bowl against Louisville under Gene Stalling. And the numbers tonight for Peyton Manning 288 with three touchdowns. Situation volunteers for the ball. You can see it just at the six and a half yard line. Graham tries to bounce it outside. He'll take it to the four-yard line. And Mike Tirico, let's check with you. 
Oran, this McDonald's breakaway takes us to the chop shop. Most of the South baseball interest happy on a three-hitter with Steve Avery and a couple of relievers, including Mark Wohlers. The Atlanta Braves win the National League pennant, sweeping the Braves, or sweeping the Reds, I should say, 6 nothing tonight. Hey, Michael. So the brooms are out in Atlanta, and they got a little resting time. Second down, the ball at the four-yard line. Throws it back in the flat, Tennessee makes the reception. They're going to wind up losing yards. Maurice Stavis. Fernando Bryant comes over to make the hit on him. Had that red from the start. Fernando Bryant made that play on Staley. He never had a chance to come out of this play. A little quick screen to the outside. Flips on by Alabama, which means man coverage on the outside. Fernando Bryant did exactly what he was supposed to do for the good play. That's a loss of four. So the new line of scrimmage is back at the eight. Third down and goal for the Volunteers. Fernando Bryant grew up in Tennessee and always wanted to be a Tennessee player. Ended up at Alabama. So the Volunteers call a timeout. 13-37 left in our ball game. It away. Stanley is the man, or Staley, I should say, is the man that he wanted. And it looked as though he saw good coverage everywhere and just threw it away. So they're going to bring in Jeff Hall to attempt the field goal. Good decision by Pete Manning because Brad Ford had that play uh, right from the start. He knew it was going to be a fade. He never allowed Maurice Staley to get in any kind of position to, be a, uh, to catch the ball. 10 of 13. This attempt is going to come from the left hash mark, and it'll go down at the 15, so 25-yard attempt. Has a good one, and he sails it home, so let's take a timeout. Our new score, Tennessee 38 and Alabama 14. Let's check with you. Well, as you guys mentioned, most college fans are aware of the sanctions hanging over the University of Alabama's football program pending appeal. Now, initially, Alabama did a zone investigation in conjunction with the NCAA enforcement staff. They proposed penalty, came up with a loss of four scholarships this year. However, once they went before the NCAA's Committee on Infractions, additional sanctions were tacked on, a three-year probation, a ban on postseason play in 95, including the SEC championship and the bowl game, and we'll have more in a moment. Okay, Mike, I started to say this is very important, so uh, don't rush. We'll get back to you. Pass over the middle, in and out of the hands of Malone. Mike? Yeah, thanks, Ron. In addition to the ban on postseason play in 95, including the SEC championship and a bowl game, scholarship reductions, four scholarship reductions for the academic years of 1995-96 and 96-97, and then a return back to the NCAA maximum of 85 scholarships in 1997-98. We'll have more in a moment, and I know Coach Gottfried has more on that. Kitchens from that shotgun right over the middle ball tip. This is interceptable, and yes, it is. It's Deron Jenkins looking for a blocker. He'll come back to the short side of the field, and he is tackled at the 23 yard line. Look at those turnovers again. Alabama with four tonight. A big difference. But going back to the sanctions, Ron, uh, first of all, was it recruiting violations uh, on Alabama? It was an agent situation with Antonio Langham. And then the university and the infractions committee or the NCAA enforcement group got together in what's called a summary disposition. And they both agreed that there'd be just four scholarships. That would be the penalty. But then when it went in front of the infractions committee, they hit them a little bit harder. And Ron, I'll tell you what, in my own personal opinion, it's wrong what they did. They, uh, they added too much to them, and uh, the appeal process is going to take place November 16th, and it really would be nice if they'd give yeah, Alabama foul. back and give them some, some things back, and uh, because I think the penalty does not match what they did. 
we'll go back to Mike Adamley in just a moment. You know, the interesting thing about that date also, that's two days before the Auburn game. Well, it? it's terrible timing because of that, the, that ball game, but uh, this thing takes on so long. You endure so long with this process that they have. Mike, if they win the appeal, they could still be eligible. If the, There'll if be a bowl game. They may lose the third year of probation. Uh, a lot of things are possible. Manning's pass complete at the 21. Mike Adam. Well, Joe Buffington is a former NCAA enforcement officer official, now an attorney here in Alabama. Joe, first of all, what is the status of the appeal? Well, last month, the university announced that it had, uh, to the media, that it had filed a written response to uh, the appeal process. And the next thing that will happen is the Committee on Infractions will now have 30 days to file a res uh, its response to show why it made its findings and to support those findings. In your opinion, in all honesty, does the university have any grounds to stand on? Well, that's a tough question. Of course, each case is, is decided on its own merits. However, I will say that when Alabama announced the reasons for its appeal, it sounded like they had some meritorious arguments, and I think they'll make a very reasoned argument uh, that the penalties were excessive. Okay, Joe, thanks so very much for joining us. And again, the appeal on November 16th. Gentlemen? Okay, by the way, on that last pass play, Peyton Manning now over 300 yards. First person since Brett Favre against the Gene Stallings team to do that. Graham a hit and tackled at the line of scrimmage. Kevin Jackson is the man who caught him with the ankles. Trying to put a period on this NCAA thing. With a summary disposition by allowing the school and the NCAA infractions committee to decide that, what happened to Alabama is going to question. There's going to be a lot of people questioning even if they ever want to do that again because Alabama got hit hard. Not as hard as Ole Miss down the road here, but Alabama, I mean, this is it's really ridiculous, the penalty they put on it. up the middle. They'll go with the running play. Graham can get by this guy, which he cannot, and that's Steve, or Kevin Jackson. Then he's got a long way to run. Clock running. Under 11 and a half minutes left to play in this ball game. Tennessee, 38-14, and devolves with that intercepted pass a moment ago, looking for more. Philip Fulmer is uh, just over 11 minutes away from getting off the snide. A lot of years of frustration. He's going to be sacked. Second sack by Alabama tonight, and Van Botten will be credited with the sack. We talked about Peyton Manning off the top, and what a great quarterback he is. And Brandon Stewart was at the same school last year, and he's at Texas A&M now transfer, and I think he's going to be another great quarterback that comes along. He's going to play for R.C. Slocum down there, but he had two outstanding freshmen there, and they tried to play both of them, and Brandon Stewart decided to leave, go to A&M, and, of course, Peyton Manning is the beneficiary of that decision because he gets all the time now. Field goal attempt. This one will come from the 27-yard line, so a 37-yard attempt. Plenty of distance on this one, and Hall is perfect. So this equals the worst beating of a Tennessee team over Alabama ever here at uh, Legion Field. 1969, 41-14, that exact margin. Let's take a look at the top quarterbacks in the country and see... Well, this has been updated. Peyton Manning now over Werfel, Hoying of, uh, of Ohio State, Canal of Florida State, and Frazier of Nebraska. Manning almost at 2,000 yards with 14 touchdowns this year. And you got to consider him in the uh, race for the Heisman Trophy. Even though he's a young sophomore, he's still what he's doing with his ball club, then they have a chance to be a 10-1 football team if they continue on this path. But there's no reason why he should not be involved as a top candidate in the Heisman race. Well, as we mentioned, tonight over 300 yards. And of course, he had those staggering numbers in the first half, 253 yards. 
253 with uh, three touchdowns. 20 or 13 of 20 in that opening 30 minutes. Turn it, they say no, don't do it. So Mike Tarico gives us an opportunity to check back with you. Or on the Okay, uh so from the 20 yard line. Back inside the 15 yard line and that's five times that they've gotten the kitchen tonight. Without any threat of a running game, it's just to pin your ears back and rush the quarterback for the Tennessee defensive front. Shane Burton, number 84, with good pressure. By the way, our primetime family would like to congratulate our associate producer, Josh Hoffman, who will be getting married at this time next weekend to Kerry McWiggin. Best wishes, Josh. Gonna miss you the next two weeks. I have a feeling that that feeling will not be mutual, though. hit from behind and he was sacked for now a half dozen times. Anthony Hampton, number 85, just came into the football game. Fresh. Fresh legs. 6'5", 210-pound sophomore. And this is all happening down at the end of the stadium that is covered in orange where the Tennessee folks have got their tickets. And they're loving it. It's like a private show right in front of them under nine minutes to play. And that man is not loving it. And he's done a nice job, again, focus on a football team and you got that NCAA thing swirling around you. Tough. Kitchens had a sail on him. And Austin will make the interception. His knee was on the ground, but it's Tennessee football. Turnover. Now, let's go back to what we talked about off the top of the telecast, Mike. We had said that in that nine-year period, when Tennessee was 0-8-1, that they had turned the ball over 30 times, Alabama only eight. Tonight, we have had a complete reversal. And I'll tell you the reason for that, Peyton Manning, he put the pressure on Alabama's offense, made him come out and play the same type of game that Tennessee wanted them to play, the fast baseball game. Alabama not capable of that tonight. in the running play. Tip off the 95 college basketball season with Midnight Madness. It all starts tonight from Maryland, Virginia, and Michigan. ESPN 2 and 1 a.m. from Kansas, Minnesota, and Mississippi State. Hey, that's not very far away. Do, do you have an idea that our friend Dick Vital, do you think maybe his heart's pumping a little bit because the hoopsters are about to get it teed up and going? Probably hoping that no one makes that shot again so it costs him a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> This time to Chester Ford, and the fullback will take it down to the 25-yard line. That'll move the sticks for the Volunteers. They credit this offensive line of Tennessee tonight because they played against a very good defensive front of Alabama. Might talk about the changes that were made and the reason that they made those changes, putting Miller from center to guard and Lehman in from tackle to guard. Well, they moved Lehman from tackle to guard and switched the center and guard because when you play mostly 4-3 teams, everybody's putting their big tackles on your guards. So they want the stronger players against those tackles as you see the difference in week one and this week. And when you want movement out of your guards against those big tackles and outside, most of the time the tackles are playing against outside rushes of defensive end. You don't need that physical tackle. Graham tries to bounce it to the outside. And Staten is going to be there to push him out of bounds. Mike Tirico, let's check with you. And we're going to hold it right here. I, we may have had an inadvertent face mask by Staten. So you can hear the conversation. Five yards stepped off the that every 
10, 30, and 50 minutes after the hour. ESPN updates you on all the scores in the world of sports, including the top 25 in college football. Florida just keeps rolling up points, 49 today. Nebraska, 57 points. Florida good on offense today and special teams. Ron Zook, of course, runs a special team down there. They get the big kickoff return, momentum changer. This is Graham. Good pursuit by that Alabama defense, and he's going to be dropped down for a loss. Tennessee, of course, trying to run wide plays, anything they can just to consume time, holding on to the football and uh, run the clock down. We're about to go under seven. And for Philip Fulmer, we showed you the traffic off the top of the telecast against Alabama and Florida, 0-4 and 1. Now that first number is about to change. It's about to go to 1-4 and 1. Said he was in Jackson Hole, Wyoming with his family this summer. Ran into a guy who was a, a UT fan. And the guy couldn't ask quickly enough, when are you going to beat Alabama and Florida? And he said, here I am on vacation. Graham tries to bounce it to the outside. He'll be stopped at the 23. A fan that obviously watches and reads our graphics. Graham shaking a little bit. This juncture with the 41-14 ball game. I mean, Graham has just gone to the sideline and got a little nick, and they're not deep at tailback. Why? Why do you have? Well, no, I'd there? get him out of the ball game. I'd bring him out so that fans could cheer him and uh, get him as close to me as I could find him. <laughs> not want him to get hurt in this ball game. So let's take a break. 6-10 left in our ball game. 41 to 14 balls. Decatur. We don't talk about a bad hair day. And I have a feeling that the celebration that has started, a lot of people are going to feel like his hair in the morning in that Tennessee crowd. Jay Graham, 17 carries, 114 yards and a touchdown. So now Tennessee with the Ford and Lane, the two fullbacks in the game. They're going to run a little reverse here with the end. That's Dustin Moore. Justin is able to stay inbounds, so the clock will continue to run, and we go under six minutes. Pretty good athlete, Dustin Moore, 86. Uh, played him a little bit versus Arkansas. Showed him a lot of things in the Y around, the tight end around, caught the ball. Good fake. Peyton Manning faking a toss, and here's the good athlete, Dustin Moore, coming around the corner. That's Staten holding on to him, trying to wrestle him down. Dustin's only a freshman. short Staten again gets credit for the tackle so the Alabama offense will come on and Tennessee did not choose to put the ball up let's take a look at the numbers on Peyton Manning tonight 20 of 29 301 yards three touchdowns and he scored one running and the most important part he came off the mark tonight he set the tempo of this football game right off the bat with that first pass and applying the pressure to Alabama's offense. Pigeons throws it complete. Peyton Manning for the night versus man-to-man -man in zone. He was equally effective. 88 yards, man-to-man -man zone. Right in that target, 214 yards. 10 of 11. Kitchens almost intercepted again as Sean Summers cut in front. Juggled it as he did a 360 and then dropped it. 
he had it right in his hands. He bumped into one of his teammates and just lost the football. Looking at the best quarterback in the country, I believe, right here. College think, football, Pete think Manning. so, huh? And I don't think there's much doubt. Said that before his freshman year and also before his...